Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to create rag dolls using the physics in Game Maker. So to start off, you're going to want to make two sprites, oh, three sprites, sorry. Um, you can ignore the bod sprites, I won't be showing you that in this tutorial. Okay, um, start off, just make a ground sprite, so mine's just a 32 by 32 um, black square, and that's centered. Then I've got the ragdoll head, which is just a 32 by 32 circle, which is also centered. And then the ragdoll body is a 12 by 32 rectangle, and that is also centered. You don't have to go by the exact sizes, but just while going through this tutorial, I would advise doing it just so that way, like the codes are all going to work for you and everything without you having to change anything. Then you can experiment with it later. Okay, um, the scripts, you won't be needing that. Objects, anything in this unused folder, you won't be needing because I won't be showing you that today. Everything else, I'll be showing you, and then I've got a room as well. Okay, the room, physics settings, um, gravity is on 60, and my room is a physics world. Uh, width is 960, height is 640. Um, the room speed is 60. Um, you can pretty much set the room settings to whatever you want. That doesn't matter all that much. Okay. Um, my control object, you don't have to worry about that. And then I've just got the ground set up around the edges there. Before you'll be able to set up the ground though, you'll need to make an object for it. So mine's just called Object Ground Basic. Um, uses physics and it's just a box shape and parented to object static parent with density of zero object dynamic parent handles my collisions so in object dynamic parent I've got a collision with itself and that's just comment collision and it's the same with the static parent okay and then the static parent is just an object it doesn't have anything in it Okay, for those of you that don't know, my static and dynamic parents are there for both organization and collisions. So within the physics world, you need to have a collision between the like two objects. So let's say you had a ball and a ground object. The ball and ground wouldn't collide unless you had a collision event between those two. So by parenting these two, my static or dynamic parents, the collisions are done for me. Okay, now getting into the ragdoll. I've got an object for the ragdoll head. So it's just called OBJ ragdoll head. It is a circle shape. You don't have to worry about the code in that. That is for some of the other stuff that I added into this, but you won't need that, so don't worry about any of that code. Just make the object, make it a circle shape, and I've parented mine to object ragdoll parent. And then in object ragdoll parent, it is then parented to object dynamic parent, so in the end it still gets the collisions. Okay. Then I've got a object for the ragdoll body, so it's just called OBJ ragdoll body. Again, uh, just a box shape outlining the sprite. Um, that is parented to object ragdoll parent as well. And you don't have to worry about the code in that either, but you won't be needing that. Okay. Now in I've got an object called object ragdoll create. This is the object that creates and sets up ragdoll. So it's got all the coordinates it needs and everything in it. And yeah, okay. So that's just called obj ragdoll create. It doesn't have any physics properties. It's got nothing but a create event. So I'll just open up this code. And this here is where the ragdoll is created. Okay, so I've got all my parts saved to separate variables, depending on what you want to do with it and how advanced you're going, you won't necessarily need like so many different variables for it, but this is just the way I've done it. Okay, so head equals instance create object ragdoll head, this one here. Okay, all that does is it creates an object for the ragdoll head um, at object ragdoll creates x position and it's y position minus 48 pixels um, body1 equals 
instance create object ragdoll body but two equals instance create object ragdoll body. Now I've got two body variables because my body is made up of two parts to add like kind of a bend in the back of the ragdoll. Okay, um, then I just join them with physics joint revolute create body one and body two. That gets joined at x and y because that's where the joint needs to be. And then after that, I get body one and head. Now, just before I continue, I'm going to show you how I get the coordinates for the body parts. Okay, so here's the way I found to do it: is um, if you've already got a room in the game that you don't want to move around or anything, you can just create a new room for this. But I'm just gonna actually, yeah, I'll just make a new room. Okay, so make a new room. You can delete this later, so it doesn't matter all that much. Um, set the snap X and snap Y to whatever you want. So I'm gonna go 16 by 16 for both of those. And then I've got you've got your ragdoll head part and the uh, ragdoll body. So then using these different parts, you can make up your ragdoll in this room. Well, what you want to do is put the middle of your ragdoll at zero and zero in the room. What this does is if I put that there, you can see down the bottom that x is 0 and y is minus 16. So I can either write in a text file or might be write it down on a piece of paper that um, body 1 is x and y minus 16. Then for body 2, it is x and y plus 16. Okay, so same with the arms and legs and head, so I'll grab my head first. My head's value would be x and y minus 48. My arms would be x minus 16, y minus 16. And then the second part of the arm would be x minus 16 and y plus 16. And so on. So pretty much all I do is I set out my ragdoll relative to 0 in the room. And that way I can get all my values easily. Okay, um, I won't be needing that room anymore, so I can delete that. Okay, um, back to Ragdoll Create. So, I just showed you how I got my values. Um, this plus 12 variable, that is just for the distance between the body and the arms and legs. So, um, in my leg 1, it's instance create x plus the plus variable. And then y plus 48. So the y is the correct distance that I got from placing the ragdoll out in the room. But then plus isn't, um, it's just so that I can get the right distance from the body. Okay, um, it's pretty much the same thing as the head and body, except this time I only create leg one and two. And then join those, like join um, the body and leg one. And then after that, I join leg one and two together so that creates one joint for the leg to the main body and then a joint for the knee. Okay, then leg one and two again. I didn't use separate variables for each leg, I just used the same thing. And basically it does the same thing. It starts off by connecting the first part of the leg to the main body and then it connects the two leg parts together at the knee. And then once again it's pretty much the same for the arms except different values. Arm one and two creates a joint connecting the arms to the body and then creates a joint connecting the two parts of the arm it's the exact same here and then once all those parts are connected it destroys the object because it's no longer needed ok so I'll just maximize that ok so if you need to pause the video there so you can see all the code and copy that down if you need to um, I'll put that in the description if you just want to copy and paste it. But yeah, I'll just show you how it works now. Okay, now my game has blood effects, well, pretty crappy blood effects at that, but yeah, it has blood effects and stuff in it. I didn't show you those, don't worry too much about it. And in my game, I can actually drag the ragdoll as well. And I'll, I may as well show you how to do that. Okay, um, something object ragdoll parent, I think it's in the body parts themselves. Yep, okay, so in step. I think. Yep. Okay, so I've got a held variable which is set in the create event. So create 
held equals false. Okay, so we're not picking it up. When the left button is pressed, just open up. Okay, I don't really know what's going on at the moment. It's not opening for some reason. Oh, here we go. Okay, left pressed. Okay, that refuses to open for some reason. I don't know why. I'll go to this one. It's the same code. Alright, so left pressed held equals true. Now that's the same for the head as well. Okay. What is going on? Okay, I'm having a bit of issues for some reason at the moment. I'll just pause this and then I'll bring it back up in a sec. Okay, now that I've got that working again. Okay, so um, as I said before, left pressed is just held equals true. And then in the step event, if held equals true, and after clicking the object it does, then physics apply force x, y, mouse x minus x times 20, and mouse y minus y times 20. Now the times 20 won't necessarily be the same for you, it all depends on the amount of gravity you've got in your room. Um, obviously the more gravity you've got, the more force you need to apply to be able to pick it up. Um, otherwise, if you've got less gravity, then you'll need less force. Yeah, um, if not, mouse check button and be left, then held equals false. And those are just for my blood effects there, so you don't have to worry about those. Um, that code, it's the exact same for the ragdoll body. So the head and body codes with the um, holding are the exact same, so you can just copy that straight over. Okay, and now to show you how it works. Okay, so all I do is so hang on a sec. I've actually got to put in a ragdoll create object, so that will do. Put that in, hit play, and there's a ragdoll. As you can see, I can pick it up, turn it around, and there's my crappy blood effects. But yeah, that's how you create a ragdoll using the physics. Now, um, it doesn't have to be a person, of course. You can make like a dog, a dinosaur, whatever you can think of, really. You can make a ragdoll for it, pretty much. You've just got to have the right sprites and everything for it. But that's just a really simple one. Um, yeah. So I hope you learned something from this. If you've got any questions, send me a personal message on YouTube or comment in the video if you don't want to send a personal message. Or I'll reply to it either way as soon as I can. Um, I've got a Facebook page. If you could like that, that'd be nice. But you know, don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, subscribe if you want more videos. Well, I'll be making more whether you subscribe or not. But if you want to be able to see them when I release them, then subscribe. Obviously, um, like the video too. Just show your support, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I learned something, and good luck with it.